when you think about uh, sports and obviously what that does to viewership on your own platform, because those boats are going to rise significantly. News has risen. Live events, which which Disney has been known for, you know, to bring people to the set. Um, that's all real positive for linear TV. But then, you know, you were first out of the gate with Disney Plus, and congratulations with the success that you've had with that platform. And, you know, HBO Max came out, and NBC Peacock came out, and Quibi came out, and Netflix has been there, and Amazon has been there, and CBS All Access is, is growing. You know, all of these streaming flat platforms are going to suck the wind out of traditional linear TV viewing. Obviously, it's been up, you know, because everybody is working from home. Now the, the ratings are starting to level off a bit. But, but I fear that other than, than sports and news, linear TV has the chance of completely disappearing within the next three to five years because we are training the consumer now that, that direct-to-consumer viewing on these platforms is the way to go. So how do you view the future? And, and you guys just bought Fox, two, two great uh, couple of big networks that came along with that, Nat, Nat Geo and FX. So you're investing in linear TV platforms. You must see a future somewhere. But I fear that, 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 that this is a self-fulfilling prophecy and it's going to all disappear. Give me your philosophy on that. Uh, walk me back off the ledge, please, because I'm a big believer I'm gonna in linear walk TV. You. I'm going to walk you fast. Don't worry. Good. So I, I agree. News, sports, and I would say live events and, and big moments um, will be a big opportunity in linear television, especially broadcast television. Um, I think we have, as a company, as you know, we have Hulu, which is our ad-supported general entertainment platform, Disney Plus, which as you said, huge, huge success right out the door and, and really anchored in our core brands. Um, and then ESPN Plus, our sports platform, which is really complementary to everything that we're doing um, on our linear sports networks and, and has some original events on the platform like UFC, um, and boxing um, that really drive a younger consumer who's looking to, to consume sports on those platforms. As we think about, you know, brands like FX and Freeform, for example, we are building content intentionally for our linear platforms and for Hulu, right? And so to the extent that we know, we understand that the future is the ability to really drive consumption on any screen that the consumer wants to watch on, it's critically important for us. And, and so as, as John Landgraf is thinking about his content slate, he's thinking about it not only for um, the platforms that which he currently has um, established himself as a breakthrough ad supported premium brand storyteller, um, but also as, as a platform of a content that will eventually live on Hulu and what the, the audience and consumption of content is on the Hulu platform. Um, and so we are all of our content creators and, and, you know, we have probably the largest number of television studios of any company now and, and the Fox acquisition actually um, made that a reality. Um, but as we think about linear television, there will always be a place in, in my mind in terms of sports because sports is live. And so the opportunity around ESPN to me is very, very clear. Um, and yet there will be opportunity to go deeper and more broad uh, in terms of the type of niche sports coverage that we do on ESPN Plus today and, and continue to invest in. Um, when we think of our broadcast network, yes, news, yes, sports, and I do believe live, right? We've shown that through uh, a multitude of whether we think it's The Bachelor or Dancing with the Stars or the Disney sing-alongs and things like that that really drive big audiences and, by the way, that also bring sports um, in, a, in a meaningful way, in a broader way than we have done on ABC historically. Um, and then our, our cable networks, I think we continue to look at, you know, there is premium cable and then there is repeat cable. And so we continue to make significant investments in original content because we know that original content um, continues to drive consumption, not only on the OTT platforms, but on our linear platforms, right? We know that we see that in the numbers. And so the investment and the commitment behind both of those strategies will continue at least, you know, in the near future of how we think about our businesses because they both are complementary and they have different audiences. We're finding through the research and the data um, and that's informing a lot of the decisions of what we're making from a content investment perspective is they're not the same audiences. And so when someone consumes you know, a, a show on FX linear, and we look at the data of who's consuming that show on Hulu, they're complementary and additive. They don't 
they're not taken away from each other. Um, if that changes over time or that becomes different, maybe we would make some different decisions. But I can tell you right now, that's not happening. You know what? Very articulate, and and I understand the, you know the the plan. Sounds good. Yeah. So let's start a great rumor. I hear Disney's going to buy TikTok. <laughs> Well, you know, I know a guy who moved over to TikTok who's amazing. Right. Um, and so, you know, I'm going to miss him tremendously, but I know he's going to kill it at TikTok. So, you know, yeah. hopefully, by the way, how great if he would make that platform, you know, as big as we know it can be so that, you know, Disney would eventually own it one day. I'm not sure that's true ever, but. Um, no, it, it, no, I agree. But, you know, when I think about that, you, you now, you know, when you think about the seat that you sit in, you know, two bosses in the last in the last year and Kevin and now you, you know, you have two other streams of reporting now that Kevin's gone. You had to deal with, you know, the merger of, of, of Fox. Then you have to deal with, with COVID and, and, you know, now we're dealing with a lot of the other um, turmoil that this country is going through. When you think about working from home in, in, in everything that, that you've seen take place, not just you and your, and your sales force, you know, to me, I actually think, you know, I want to go back to the office, but I believe that, that people are more accessible. I think people are more sincere. I think that people are more caring. You know, it's interesting, Rita, you and I probably would have gotten together once a quarter, you know, for a breakfast or, or a lunch. I know that I've talked to you personally like this more in the last 10 weeks than I probably did more in the last six months. That's just right. because I think people are more accessible and it's interesting. So what have you learned from, you know, as we close this conversation, I'd love to hear what you've learned from this work from home situation with you and your Salesforce observations. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, where's the silver lining in some of this? Oh God, there's so many silver linings. I can't even begin to tell you. I, I can tell you that my team is more of a team than they have ever been right as a leadership team and as an entire organization. I think I've learned to communicate better. I think they've learned to communicate better. Um, I think what shows in, in times like this is empathy and people who are really invested in each other. The teams have done an extraordinary job of being invested in each other's success. We're, in, we're actually in the middle of integrations of, of, we're still in the middle of integrations of our teams, right? With the Hulu team coming in together now. And, and yet we've had to figure out how to work cohesively and on behalf of our clients while while trying to figure out how to work from home and what you saw is very very quickly people cared not only about the business but they cared about each other and their families and making sure that their people felt good and safe and taken care of and i think that is a massive silver lining i think the fact that all of us have had time to spend more times with our families i will never get this time back and i never thought i would have this time i don't think i've had this many meals with my daughter who's 15 since the day she was born Right. right. And so I will be eternally grateful for that because that it just it has allowed you to be present in such a way that I actually think it has, you know, allowed people to feel better invested in themselves and in their families that in turn has allowed them to feel better invested in the company and the business. Um, and, you know, I, I think there's so many silver linings in all of that, that ultimately what it means when we go back, I think we will all go back. I'm not sure we'll ever go back to exactly the way it was, though. I got to be honest yeah. with you. I think what we've proven is you can absolutely work from home and be as effective or more so than when you are in the office. And to the extent that we have now realized and pressure tested that because we didn't have a choice uh, in a world where it was hard to do and yet we were successful at it, I think is just, I think, a big win out of this whole process. I think we're all seeing that silver lining and the fact that, you know, I know for me, I know now I can recruit from anywhere in the world which is interesting. But I'll give you one other little observation. And I was the biggest critic of this. You know, Andy Plesser and his camera stalking us at Con <laughs> or, at, or at CES or at the Upfronts or at some of these big charity events in the city that, 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 that our team supported so much or Davos. And, and I used to say, there are way too many of these, right? And I'll bet all of us wish that we could all come back together and see each other in person, hug, hello, chat face to face. And I think a lot of us thirst for that, 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 that opening party that we can all come back together again, you know, when this is all over. Cause I do miss everybody that personal, that personal connection. 
I and I want to, yeah, and Rita, I want to thank you so much um, for your words of wisdom. I always value, you know, what you have to say and, and, and what you do for this industry. And thank you again to you and your team for uh, helping us all through this. Thank you, Bill. It was a pleasure.